Hey there everybody, it's Mike Delisio with another Solo Mode review. Today I'm going to be taking a look at the Solo Mode for Wild Space from designer Joaquim Tomei and publisher Catch-Up Games. Wild Space is a space-themed card game where you are trying to build combos to have a tableau and you're playing against an AI opponent. Let's head on over to the table, I'll give you a quick overview on how the Solo game plays, then I'll come back here and give you my final thoughts. Okay, here we have an example set up for the solo game of Wild Space. We've got our crew deck here. We've got three cards that were randomly drawn face up. We've got my captain here. We've got the AI captain over here. I would be playing as purple. They would be playing as red. The only thing that is specific to the solo game as far as components is this deck of hostile planet cards. And so what you're going to do is you're going to create a deck of five cards. And you'll look in the rule book, and it's got a difficulty level here that you can adjust. So, if you want to play on an easy level, you would have a different distribution of these hostile planet cards as you would for the normal and hard. So, for example, let's say I wanted to play in the normal mode. I would take two of the green cards, or the, two of the yellow, I suppose. Uh, one of the dark blue, two of the green. So, let's say I did that. I took two of the yellow cards, one of the dark blue, and two of the dark green cards there. And I just shuffle those up. And what I do is I would just have two of them face up. All right, so there's one and there's another one. I wouldn't probably have them laid out this way, but just for purposes of showing you, I'll put them right there on camera. So there's the two hostile planet cards. And so what you would do is on your turn, you play everything exactly the same way you would as normal. So let's say that these were the three cards that I happen to have. You would start the game with three cards. And let's say that I wanted to play, well, let's say I wanted to play this Rhino, okay? And so what this is telling me basically is once I play it, well, first, if I want to play this card, I have to put my spaceship on one of these two home planets. And the two things that you can do on your turn is place a spaceship on the bottom part of one of these planet tiles, or if you're already there, you can explore. So you have five uh, spaceships that you start the game with, and you're only ever going to be able to take two actions with each, so 10 total actions. So let's say that the first thing I wanted to do was go here, where I discard a card to play a card. So what I'll do is I'll discard this card to play this card. Well, no, I'll play this card, because this one I would have to discard a card and already discarded one, so I'll play that, which allows me to draw a card. So then I could draw any one of these three, or I can draw off the top of the deck. Let's say I just drew one off the top of the deck, okay? So now I've got two crew members in my tableau. What these planets do is they tell you that once you get this many number of crew members, you can flip it over. So later on in the game, once I got three, I would have more planets to go for than six, and then nine. So my turn is exactly the same as a regular game. I either land on a planet or I move it up and explore and do one of those upper actions. So for the AI, what you do is you're going to choose one of these two planet cards, hostile planet cards, and you're going to place one of their ships on the card. And it's going to be on the bottom because you're landing on the bottom and then eventually you would move up. So let's say that I wanted to go here. What this is going to do is it's going to tell you what you do from left to right on each one of these spaces. So nothing happens in this first space. The second space means you draw this card and you place it into their tableau. As soon as you draw a card, you immediately replace it. This says you discard a card out of this space and then draw one. So this gets discarded, a new one comes out that immediately gets added to their tableau. And that's not great for me because that's two monkeys that they have in their crew. And this is a set collection game. You want to have sets of three or more of each animal. So they've already kind of started in a good spot for them. Then I would take my turn and on, on their next turn, I could either move this up here or I can place it down here, which would be drawing one from each of those uh, sections there. So as you complete these cards, they're gonna get added to the 
to the kind of tableau that the AI has. It'll eventually have all five of them there. And at the end of the game, they're going to score points just like you will by having those sets of animals. And if you have one of each type of animal, you get 15 points. They're also going to get a point for every one of these symbols showing. So for all of these symbols, they're going to get three points for them. They're going to get four points for every one of those symbols showing and one for every one of those symbols, okay, and two for those. So these are all ways that they're going to score points at the end of the game. You'll be scoring your points as normal by trying to get sets of animals, by trying to play these robots out, which give you points, by trying to move up your kind of uh, track here. You can eventually get eight, eight points there. So you'll get points the way you normally would. The AI is going to score points similarly, but with some bonuses added. If you've got more points than the AI, you win. If you don't, you lose. So let's head back over and I'll tell you my final thoughts. Okay, so hopefully that gives you a pretty good idea on how the solo game of Wild Space plays. It's a relatively quick game. You only have 10 actions, and so you've got to make the most of every turn. The first thing I'd like to do is talk about some solo benchmarks. These are things I like to discuss in the solo mode reviews. The first thing is the win condition. Is this a beat your high score variant or are you playing against an opponent? And in Wild Space, this is a game that when I first read the rules, I thought was kind of ripe for a beat your high score variant because it's a tableau builder, it's an engine builder, you're just trying to optimize your score. But they went with a virtual opponent in this one. You are playing against another, uh, another player, a virtual player. And I actually like that because what it actually asks you to do is not only make decisions for your turn, make the decisions that are best for you, but you're also going to have to make decisions on behalf of the virtual opponent. And oftentimes what that does is it forces you to make some really difficult choices. It, it's like, okay, do I let them take that card, which is one I would love to have, but it's worse for them, or do I let them take a card that's better for them that I have no interest in? And so it's interesting because you're not, you're very much not just paying attention to the tableau that you're building. You are comparing it constantly with the tableau that is being built for that AI opponent, the, that, that being built by you as the player. And so that's an interesting dynamic that sometimes you're forced to make decisions that are going to help your opponent. And that's a, a really interesting way to handle it. I thought that it would just be a, a beat your high score variant because of it being a kind of an efficiency game. But I like that they went in a different direction and went with the virtual opponent. The other thing I like to talk about is setup and teardown, and it's a breeze uh, for Wild Space. It doesn't take any time at all to set the game up. You basically shuffle up some cards, put out your planet tiles, and you're essentially good to go. I mean, it doesn't really take more than three minutes, maybe, to, to set the game up, and teardown is just as quick. And that's actually really important for this game because it's over so quickly. Um, it, it's 10 turns, 10 turns for you, 10 turns for the AI, and so you really, if you had a huge setup and teardown, that would be a big negative because the gameplay itself is over relatively quickly. Now, that being said, it's very much the type of game that I've found to be one I want to play back to back. But if you don't necessarily want to do that, you don't have to feel bad about it because the setup and teardown is so quick. Uh, the other thing I like to talk about are rules and the rules in the game are well laid out. They're clear. They give examples for uh, the specific rules that maybe take a little bit more uh, explanation and they give you some, some actual illustrated examples, which is helpful so that you don't have to wonder, is that what they mean by that? It, it makes it very nice. So the rules are in their own section of the rule book towards the end as they typically are for the solo rules. They're well laid out, they're clear, illustrated examples, nothing bad to say about the rules. Okay, so what are my thoughts on the overall solo experience for Wild Space? Uh, this is a game that I, I really enjoy. I enjoy it quite a bit. Um, I love the artwork. The artwork is beautiful. Um, and I like the theme, but I do have to state that the theme is barely there. Uh, it, it could have been any number of themes. I'm fine with this theme. Um, the, the Putting the spaceships on the planets, 
that really never had any kind of thematic connection to me. I never felt like I was landing a, sp a spaceship on a planet and then exploring a planet. There's no feeling of exploration when you're basically drawing cards and, and playing cards. It, it, that, so there's a, there's a bit of a thematic disconnect there, but it's okay because I'm so engaged in the actual puzzle that's going on that I don't mind feeling a bit of a disconnect with the theme. And the art is so great that that's really where I get my immersion. I get my immersion from the gameplay, the combo building, the tableau building, and from the art. Uh, and because that's so strong, I don't really feel that huge loss from the disconnect of theme. Speaking of the engine building and combo building, it's really, really good. Um, it's you, you never feel like you're building a long-term engine. It's probably better to call it a tableau builder than an engine builder because I think that's more accurate. Uh, ta you're, you're building a tableau. The engine doesn't really apply except in single cards. You're, you're trying to, to, the only engine that you're building is perhaps trying to get a certain number of symbols so that you can play cards that will allow you to play multiple cards. And so sometimes that feels like it, but you're really more building a tableau and you're trying to weigh building sets of animals which with building cards that combo well off each other. And sometimes those things don't synergize. There might be times when you're having to choose a card that doesn't match up as well in a way to play more cards, but matches up better in the set collection, which is where the points come. And so this is essentially a set collection game, um, but you're trying to do it in such a way that you're having as many cards out as possible because generally speaking, the more cards you have, the more point scoring opportunities you're gonna have. It wouldn't be accurate to say that the person that has the most cards is gonna have the most points because that's not always the case. But having the most cards usually will give you more opportunities to play cards that will score points for those different cards that you have. So it's a satisfying tableau builder. Um, I think I should be careful about using the engine building phrase here because any engine building you're doing is very short term and you're really just trying to, to give yourself as many options as possible. So a very satisfying puzzle, really quick to, uh, to play, to set up, to tear down. Um, you get a satisfying experience in a very short period of time, beautiful art. Really, uh, Wild Space, I think, is a very, very good solo game. One of the biggest issues, I suppose, if I was going to have an issue, is that it's in a crowded space. The short card uh, combo game, uh, there, there's a lot of those out there. I do feel like it sets itself apart uh, through the, the quickness of the play and through those 10 turns, that feeling of, of pressure. Uh, I think there have been a number of games like that lately, uh, something like Res Arcana, but that's not a solo game. This kind of gives me that similar feel of trying to get the most out of a short number of turns. And so I like having that in the solo space. For all of these reasons, I think that Wild Space is a game that I can easily recommend as a solo game. I'm gonna be giving this an eight out of 10 and a high seal of approval. If it sounds interesting to you, then definitely check this one out. Thank you so much for your time as always, and have a great day.